Hello, in this video I'm going to tell you all about Elfall Chronicles, a new fantasy tabletop miniatures battle game. Hello and welcome, my name is Peter, this is the Esoteric Order of Gamers. If you've never seen one of my videos before, I've made hundreds of them about tabletop games, whether board games, tabletop miniatures games, and all the stuff in between. I absolutely love games. They're my life's obsession. <laughs> and I love talking about them. Today I'm going to look at L4 Chronicles. This is something pretty new. It's from a Slovenian company. And they actually contacted me and said, would you like to check out our new miniatures game? And I said, yeah, that looks pretty interesting. I'll check it out. They did send me a free copy, all this stuff. But apart from that, I am not charged for this video, and as always, my opinions are completely my own. What I'm going to do in this video is walk you through the basics of how to play L4 Chronicles. I'm going to show you what you can get for the game, and also I painted up some of the miniatures, so I'm going to show those off to you as well. And then after all that, I'm going to give you my personal thoughts after playing the game. So what is L4 Chronicles all about, I hear you ask? Well, let me tell you. Um, the company, which is called Free Company, uh, has made this game and it is set in the world of Kalad. And this is divided into various realms and they are controlled by the factions of the game that you can play. And those are the Coalition of Thenion, the Sand Kingdoms, the Helian League and the Empire of Soga. And each of those, of course, have different play styles and different styles of models and things. We'll go into that later. So if you want to try out L4 Chronicles, you can go to the website. I'll have a link in the show notes below. And you can immediately download the rules for free and check it out. You can buy individual sets or you can get a big box set like this, which has all the counters and dice and things you need as well. It also comes with four faction packs. So you have a pack of uh, four miniatures for each of the four factions. Um, you've got a paper play mat. Um, some, you know, nice cardboard terrain. I think this looks rather nice, this setup. It's got a sort of uh, desert ruins, Egyptian kind of feel. Um, it looks pretty cool. And on top of that, you get one of these uh, Colossus figures as well, which is a uh, really nice looking, strange Sphinx uh, statue, animated statue thing. You also get some uh, reference cards, unit cards, and counters and you get some lovely dice as well and you can buy separate dice packs if you want dice that match your particular faction oh and of course you get some templates as well spell templates and area of effect templates and things like that now the different factions uh, have their own kind of feel basically you've got the coalition of Thenion who are sort of a, a subterranean uh, race they are uh, uh, sort of magic users and stalkers and have a kind of dark elf kind of feel uh, you've got the Helian League, which is a, a, a sort of martial race, very much warriors. Uh, you've got the Sand Kingdoms, who are kind of have, had a, have a Middle Eastern uh, feel with lots of magic. They also summon creatures to the, to the battlefield. And finally, you've got the Empire of Soga, which is basically a fantasy uh, medieval Japanese faction. They're all very nice. Um, the miniatures, are, as you can see, very detailed resin figures. Uh, they have a slightly kind of anime feel. Uh, the faces have an anime feel, um, which isn't my personal taste, but some people love that kind of thing. Um, but they're very nice miniatures and very nicely detailed and actually took a little while to paint because, um, because of all the detail there. And they look good on the tabletop. All in all, it's a lovely set. If you want the rest of the creatures, you can buy this Earthen Creatures set. And this one comes with another Colossus figure, two Earth Elementals, two Golems, uh, and two gargoyles. L4 Chronicles is a skirmish game, so you're playing with a very small number of figures, typically three to five, probably four most of the time. Um, I've just played games with three models. And it is actually surprisingly easy to kill the other models because they have a very limited amount of uh, wounds or hit points or whatever you want to call it. Some of them only one, so one good hit can take a model down. So you've got to be very careful about how you uh, use your models and their battlefield roles and all that kind of thing because you can very easily lose a model if someone gets a good hit in. The other important thing to remember about this game is that it's got an action-reaction system. Now this is very much like the game Infinity, a science fiction skirmish war game. And as far as I know, it was the first game to come up with this action-reaction system. 
This game uses a very similar system and it is quite interesting and unusual. So with well-known and popular games like Age of Sigma and Warhammer 40,000, you have the I go, you go system, which is where somebody has their entire turn and then the other player has their entire turn. To me, this is kind of a bit of an old fashioned system because you are just sitting there watching while the other player does their entire turn until you get a turn. Of course, there are some modifications on this during the actual melee combat system. You might, both might be attacking each other and stuff like that. But on the whole, you each player has a turn and that's it. Then in lots and lots of other games, you have an alternating activation system, which is usually where you get to activate a unit, then your opponent gets to activate a unit and you take turns alternating and you work out the um, round that way. In games like Infinity and L4 Chronicles, this action reaction system is something very different again. And it works like this. Each model gets a certain amount of action points depending on their stamina, usually two. When it's your turn, you activate a model. It enters its active mode. And then the other player, their models are in a reactive mode. You activate your model and you decide what action it's going to take. And then your opponent gets to declare reactions to that action. And then you basically do all the reactions and actions at the same time. So you resolve the roles at the same time. Now, if you haven't played a game like this before, it's a little bit difficult to get your head around to start with. And I must admit, the game isn't helped by a pretty difficult to understand rule book. It's probably translation issues has something to do with that. But never fear, I have done a rule summary and reference for you. So you'll find all the rules summarized on just a few sheets and it'll make it a lot easier to learn and play the game. So I will put the link to this down in the show notes. You can go and download it yourself, print it out. So let's quickly go through how this works. If I select a model here to activate because it's my activation, I can say, well, this model is going to move from here. It's got a speed of whatever, so I can move over here to here. So I make that movement. And then my opponent can decide with any of their models that have action points remaining. They can say, for example, well, this guy over here is going to shoot an arrow at uh, your player. That's his reaction to your movement. Then the activated model gets to do an action. They've done a movement, now they get to do an action. So they can decide, well, I'm going to shoot at that model or some other model, or they might decide I'm going to dodge the shot that this other model is shooting at me. So you can see immediately that actions are very fluid and you make these decisions as you go in response to the state of the battlefield and what other models are doing all the time. So once the initial model has decided what they're going to do, let's say they're going to dodge the shot this other person is going to take, then you make your rolls. And in this case, because someone is shooting and the other person is dodging, they will be opposed rolls. Each attack has a strike value, which is the number of dice you roll to see if you hit or not. Now, when you do a normal roll and there's no opposition to it or anything, you just have to roll equal to or under a particular stat. But if it's an opposed roll, both players that roll their dice, they both have to get under the required stat. And then the higher of those rolls wins. Now, you're probably thinking, hold on, lower, higher, what? Well, this has all been done in Infinity for a long time. And once you get the hang of it, it works fine. It's just a little bit non-intuitive. As I said, you're trying to get equal to or under a stat. Both players are trying to do that. But then to compare who has won in that opposed role, it's the higher of those roles that is still under the required stat. Whether you have just um, done an unopposed attack and managed to hit, or whether you've done an opposed attack and the other person didn't dodge, if you get that hit in, you of course then have to damage them. And you do this by making a, a damage roll. You have to roll a dice and you add your opponent's armor stat, and the total has to be under the power stat of your hit. If you hit, you do a point of damage, and that might be enough to take some models out. Now, all of these rolls are made with D20, so there's a big range there, and things can be a little bit swingy when you're using a D20 range. You can get anywhere from one to 20, so you've got to take that into account as well. Combat is dangerous. As I said before, you're always reacting what's happening on the battlefield and you're always looking out to see what other models are doing. And you've got to be careful because one good shot can take you down. So there's no just sort of charging into combat willy nilly and trying to do a few random shots here. I mean, that will not work out well for you. You have to get your models into good position. You've got to keep track of where the other models are and what they can do in response to your actions. It's very interesting. 
And the best thing about it is that both players are always engaged in the action. It's not like someone is taking a turn. Sure, one of the players is the activated player and they're activating their models. They're in the active role. Their opponent is reacting. And then, of course, when you get to the next turn, you swap roles. So the reactive player becomes the active player and vice versa. But both of you are making decisions all the time about how you're acting and how you're reacting on the board. And sometimes this might mean you don't do anything at all in an attempt to draw out what the other player's reaction is going to be. For example, during your activation, you get to move and do an action. Well, you might decide just to remain what is called idle and not move at all. You could turn on the spot, but you don't move. And then the other player has to react to what you're doing. So you haven't committed yourself to any action before they have to commit to their reaction. As another example, one of your models might move into a position where it could take a shot at, say, three models. Well, once it's moved into that position, the reacting player has to decide who's going to dodge. They don't know who's going to be shot at. Do they waste their action points having all of their models dodge? Or do they just say, this model is going to dodge? And then, of course, when the player gets to do their action, they're just going to ignore that model because it's dodging and they're going to fire at that other one instead. These are all the kinds of interesting decisions that happen during this game. Another interesting thing about L4 Chronicles is that it has a selection of monsters. And these are sort of environmental creatures that can operate using a simple AI system during the game. So you can have uh, two players playing and the monsters are on the board and they are controlled by AI. So they might go attacking or charging towards the models from either side. As you're trying to achieve your objectives, you're trying to avoid these creatures as well because they can be quite uh, strong and difficult to kill. Now, while you'll only have about three to five models per side, there are plenty of oppor opportunities for uh, customizing them and giving them different abilities and things. Um, they also have different combat arts, which are tiered levels of abilities uh, that some uh, models have. You'll be selecting one of your models as a leader and that leader has access to stratagems and uh, at the strategic phase of every round, uh, your leader can choose one of these stratagems and give basically an overall buff to your side during that round, which can either affect your side or your opponents. You also have class abilities. So maybe one or two classes for each model and they have some nice buffs as well. There's also a whole bunch of magic to contend with on the battlefield as well. There are five different types of magic, sorcery, healing, enchantment, transmutation and conjuration so you can with conjuration you can summon creatures to the board and particularly the sand kingdoms do that kind of thing and of course you can make choices about what weapons each model is equipped with so that's a rough overview of how the game plays let's get into my personal thoughts on it shall we okay l4 chronicles what can i say now as always i want to make this perfectly perfectly clear the following is just my opinion and based on my personal likes and dislikes when it comes to games of all types. I'm an experienced player of games. I've been playing them for many, many years. I love skirmish games and battle games of all different scales and, and a whole range of different types of things. But of course, I've got my personal preferences. And one of those at the moment is that I tend to be going more and more towards simplicity uh, as I get older. I'm just in sort of for the fun and the quick play and um, the less rules is probably the better these days. But of course, your mileage might be completely different. You might be in the state of your life where you prefer really crunchy, heavy, tactical, competitive type games. So, of course, anything that I say personally may uh, not gel with your personal interests. Anyway, that out of the way, let me say I am impressed with L4 Chronicles. It's a very nice uh, package. The models look lovely. I really like that it's uh, a great set with, you know, a paper play mat and some cardboard terrain so you can get into it straight away. I definitely will be playing this game more and checking it out more. However, I do have some caveats, and that is just the complexity, because this is a relatively complex, thinky kind of tactical game. And it's supposed to be that way, of course, because you only have a few models aside, so you really have to use those models carefully and make sure they're fulfilling their battlefield roles correctly and all that kind of thing. It takes a little while for your head to get around the whole action-reaction system, but it's very interesting and brings a whole lot of different kind of decisions into the gameplay. 
you really have to be aware of what everybody's doing and sometimes you might be thinking okay I want to play this game and I want to do certain things I want to send my models here and do this and take that objective and kill that person and everything like that this isn't the kind of game where you can just go ahead and do that and then you know you might get into combat and you make a few rolls and people die no it's much more involved than that you have to take into account the other player all the time it's not going to just be your turn and you get to do your stuff you'll be either acting or reacting all the time and this is going to change how you play all the time so you're fully involved and i really like this aspect of it because it's very involving and also another good thing about the fact that there are only a few models is that the games don't go on too long once you get the hang of the system so depending on whether you start introducing um, AI controlled monsters and things like that, your games are going to be relatively short. But you do have to be careful because you can make one wrong decision and that other player can get a shot in and one of your models is gone. And you might only have three or four models and if one's gone, that's really going to affect your strategies. So you have to really think everything out. And sometimes, as I said, that means just going, well, I've got to get into a position and then wait to see what my other the other player does how they react to what i'm doing you're always thinking about what i do and how it's going to react so you can't just run out into the open because there might be three opposing models that have a bead on you and you can only dodge one of those attacks and you know with three attacks it's the chances are you're going to be in deep trouble for a faction like the coalition of Thenion, you can really be in deep trouble because most of their models just have one wound so one shot that gets through and you've had it so let me say the first thing, if you're into Infinity, which has a very similar action reaction system, um, and you feel like getting into the fantasy world rather than the science fiction and having the same kind of system in a fancy fantasy world, this will be perfect for you. Absolutely perfect. I think you'll jump across from Infinity rules rise wise to this one very easily. Um, of course, you'll have to go through the rules and see what things are different, but there's a lot of similarities. And um, I think you'll appreciate that style of gameplay, especially if you're used to it in a, that science fiction game. If you're used to something like Age of Sigma, you're going to find this very, very different indeed. And so your reaction will be really dependent on whether you're looking for something completely different from the Warhammer style of play. Is L4 Chronicles going to become one of my favorite games? I don't think so. And I'm only going to say that because, as I said, I'm preferring simpler games these days, simpler skirmishy ones where it's just a bit of a laugh and a bit of fun. This is the kind of thing where I think you need two involved players who really want to get to know their particular models and uh, play tactically and strategically and carefully. That's just not the kind of thing I'm playing these days. But I do appreciate the fact that um, it is a completely different way of playing uh, a skirmish game. At the moment, if I want a skirmish game, I'm probably thinking something more like Relic Blade or Moonstone or even Warcry, which is pretty straightforward and just an afternoon's bash and a good laugh and have a few beers. This one is not fitting that particular mold at the moment. That has nothing to do with whether it's a good game or not. Um, that's just the style of game that I like playing at the moment. So you might already be thinking, this is just the kind of game for me. I'm looking for something a bit crunchier, something where I'm involved all the time, Something where each of my models is an individual with lots of special abilities and um, particular ways of working on the battlefield. If you're after that kind of thing, I think L4 Chronicles might be very interesting. What I suggest you do is download my summary, proxy some models and give it a go. Then you can see what you think of the whole action reaction system. And if you like it, you can dive deep into L4 Chronicles. So I hope I've given you an idea of what L4 Chronicles is about. As I said, very detailed, quite thinky, quite strategic, quite tactical, bit heavy on the rules um, if you don't mind getting into that kind of thing. Um, I do think the rule book could do with some improvement and some rewriting and perhaps better translation. It's, it's not great, but I think my summary will really, really help because I've reorganized things in my summary to make things easier to understand. Be prepared for a bit of uh, rules load up front. You're really have, going to have to get into the mindset of the whole action reaction system thing. But once you do, I think you'll find it very intriguing. So L4 Chronicles, I'll put a link to my summary uh, below in the show notes. Also a link to Free Company's website so you can check it out for yourself. I hope you found this very interesting. 
The Esoteric Order of Gamers is at orderofgamers.com. You can find 440 odd rules, summaries and references that I've made over the last 10 years, or more than 10 years, uh, for your enjoyment. You can download them, print them out, put them in the box of the particular game and I think you'll find it much easier for you to pick up and play your favourite games if you've got a rule summary instead of having to look through a long rule book. Also, please subscribe if you enjoy these videos, uh, hit the all notifications button and check out my Twitter and Mastodon and uh, Facebook and Instagram channels as well. There's also an Esoteric Order of Gamers Discord channel. If you go to the website, there's a link to that there. You can join the community and talk about board games, miniatures games, all types of fantastic, imaginative, thematic games. Thank you for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.